What's up everybody, it's King Kunta, your favorite World of Warcraft YouTuber, and today we're going to be going over um, a sort of different farm, I want to say, that um, probably isn't too super popular, and uh, the, the idea that I got this farm from is uh, actually selling a bronze whelpling on the auction house. I don't know why, it just seems like this kind of battle pet tends to sell ridiculously well, um, than a lot of the other ones. I'm not sure if it's just because it's like the cheapest dragon battle pet you can get and all the lower level new people are just buying these up or what, but um, th like they sell like crazy. I was amazed, you know, it only took me like two days to sell off a couple of them and uh, they're about, you know, eight, nine, ten grand a piece and uh, their drop rates are actually quite um, big on some of these mobs that we're about to go farm. So today I'm just going to go ahead and show you uh, the whelpling and show you the stuff you'll need first. So just in case you don't know what the bronze whelpling is, we're just going to show you. Alright, this is the bronze whelpling. Currently there's only two on my auction house, so you, as you can see I kind of have a pick of the price and people are probably going to buy that one. So this is an easy kind of undercut battle that I can do right here. Um, this guy's selling his for that much, I guess, because it's level up, but that is, that's, that's way high for that. Um, so, as you can see, there's not many in the auction house, and they tend to sell quite fast, and I'm kind of surprised that, uh, people haven't actually gotten into this kind of thing before. If you see another popular YouTuber, Student Abatroz, he, uh, actually stocks up on these, and I kind of see why now. Um, I understand that they sell... Uh, quite quickly and that it's actually a good kind of market to get into if it's not exactly ruined on you know their server so go check here you guys are also going to need bear tartar because the mobs we are farming they're not super spaced out but to, they're to the point that bear tartar is going to help um, I probably don't even need to search it up for you you can just look it up it's that name right there right on the screen you see that yep so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go farm the bronze whelpling. Now it is located in the blasted land, so you have to be in the eastern kingdoms to get here down here. I will also show you where the location is at the farm, so you guys don't need to worry about that. And uh, yeah, so what's gonna happen now is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to cut the video uh, right here, and then when you see me next, we'll be in the blasted lands. See you there. Alright everybody, so as you can see we are now in the farming location here. Uh, we are in the Blasted Lands, which is in the Eastern Kingdoms, and it's right here, right next to Netherguard Keep. Now you don't have to switch this back to the old Blasted Lands or anything, you just have to go come to this area right here. And you'll see this kind of like encampment with a bunch of um, Iron March uh, Warsmiths and Grenadiers and stuff like that. So once you come to this area, you're basically, all you have to do is kill all the Iron March people. Because all the Iron March people have a drop, or a chance to drop a time-locked uh, lockbox, which uh, summons a bronze uh, whelpling. So, these are the only mobs you have to kill in the entire thing to go ahead and get these. So, first things first, do you want to pop bear tartar? And remember, these will scale up to level 90 now, so they can be a little bit challenging if you are a lower level. So let's get that buff. As you can see, I still one-shot them at level 90, or at level 110, which you all should. Um, a mass AoE spell is the best way to go about this. Now, the reason this farm is most popular for the lockbox is obviously because of you can see what I'm doing right now how many there are in just one single area and if you're a monk you have uh, <clears throat> an extreme advantage over anybody else because you can just set down the um, totem and just force them to spawn over and over again <clears throat> these mobs are quest mobs so they will force respawn if you kill enough of them now a way that people will take advantage of that is they will have a group or five or six people and uh, as you can see all these are dead right here but <clears throat> you'll have a group of five or six people at uh, both encampments so you see this if I can get out of that I'm not even sure what's happening but <clears throat> if you can see this, you'll, what you'll normally have 
is to have one person here-ish, maybe put down a monk totem right in the middle, and then another person in this area, because these all will still drop the uh, pet as well. So, when you have a group, uh, the more people you have, the better, obviously, you're going to have more of a chance to get the pet. And uh, even if you do LFR in this area, or looking for groups, sorry, not LFR, if you look for a group in this area, you actually have a decent chance of finding one, because people are constantly doing this farm. Um, I, I, like, you may or may not believe this, but I have seen groups of five or six people literally get 20 wildlings to drop in just an hour of farming this, which is crazy good. Um, obviously, if you look on wowhead.com, uh, they do have, I believe, I believe the drop chance is like 0.3 or something. It says it's, it's super low, but honestly, it doesn't really feel like it because... I think it's just the sheer density of mobs that you're able to just go ahead and group together. So you can see here, and uh, they'll all start respawning in a bit. Let's see. Oh, man, you don't force respawn yet. But, yeah. So you guys can kind of see, really, all you need to do. Anywhere there are Iron March, uh, Warsmiths, or something along that line, you can kill them. So... If we look here, they're all scattered all over these hills. Um, the Obviously, the highest density is right in this area, which is why that is the most commonly farmed one. I'm going to go ahead and kill all these guys. But any of these mobs will still drop the, uh, the pet. They do drop a ton of junk as well. Um, they actually do not drop any transmog whatsoever, which is quite interesting. found that I'm out on Wildhead uh, the other day. They will not drop any transmog, so you will either get the pet or you won't, basically. So you are going to have a bunch of junk that you're going to have to vendor after you finish farming out this location, so just be wary about that. If you have a vendor mount or uh, anything along those lines, you should be a-okay. Now, along with the uh, outside area, you also have the option to go inside of the uh, dungeon area-ish, the mines. Um, <clears throat> it's completely up to you if you would like to do this. I generally do not. I just kind of wait for them to respawn because I do not want to have to wait um, or have the time running all the way through the dungeon and coming back. Obviously, it's up to you. If you want to maximize the farm, uh, it's probably the way to go for you. If you're a completionist and you just want to try to get the pet to drop as soon as possible, uh, you can do this. But to be honest, I find this quite not not that worth it to me it might be to you if you have extra time to waste but i generally like to just keep it to the area outside so you can see this cave system is quite extensive in and of itself so it can be quite a pain in the butt to actually leave this obviously i'm not in travel form or anything like that but so, so you can see here it's just kind of a pain to have to come out of this dungeon in the end but you do have more chances for the mob to drop so if you're tired of waiting for them to force spawn or anything after that, this is the, probably the way to go. As you can see, if you actually do fall down off these tracks, you have to run quite a ways to uh, get back. And those murdered miners down there, uh, they do not drop the pet. So that is literally, that's utterly just a complete waste of your time if you actually do go down there. And uh, I think that's really all I have to say for this farm. Um, if you did like the video, if you could like, comment, and or subscribe down below, that would really help me out. Um, it really helps grow the channel, and I thank each and every one of you that have hit that subscribe button, or the notification button, or anything like that. So, if within like an hour of posting this, I see a couple notification squad people in the description below, I will obviously, you know, like your comment, and all that good stuff, and I'll respond to you, anything you need help with. Um... Yeah, that's really it. Also, check out the links in the description below if you are interested in any of the computer gear I use, if you're interested about my PC, uh, or maybe how I make my videos, anything like that. That is all in the links in the description below, so you can find all those there, and you never have to ask. Um, aside from all that, I just have a couple notes about the channel, so the base, I'm done commenting on the farm now, so if you have any questions about the channel, uh, farm just put them in the link in the description below um but uh, i've been trying real hard to do daily uploads for you guys lately and i hope you guys um actually do enjoy them 
I've been working quite hard for them. I know the last couple days I kind of hasn't been daily because I just had some other stuff to do. But uh, I'm going to try keeping it there and see how well I can do daily uploads until Battle for Azeroth. And then hopefully keep it going from there on. But um, yeah, so i just like to thank you guys and the support that you're giving me for that. And I'm just going to see you in the next video.